Although no human has yet set foot on the surface of Mars, the first ambitious plans are already underway to make the Red Planet the destination of tourist space excursions. The private space company SpaceX has set itself the goal of sending the first tourists into space in just a few years. Soon after that, the first humans are expected to set foot on the legendary Red Planet. Although SpaceX is lagging far behind its own timetable, Elon Musk is unwaveringly sticking to his revolutionary plans, which even include the establishment of a permanent Mars colony. Anyone who has the necessary small change and is actually toying with the idea of booking a trip to Mars one day will have to ask themselves which tourist destinations they could actually explore on the celestial body. Today, we have prepared something of a prototype of a Mars travel brochure, introducing you to those attractions you may soon be visiting for real. We hope you enjoy this fascinating topic. Want to join us on our galactic journey through the vastness of the universe? Then subscribe to our channel to never miss one of our videos again in the future. With a thumbs up, you'll show us that you get a kick out of our contributions. Olympus Mons If you board a spaceship in the future to visit the Red Planet, you should definitely take enough reading material with you to pass the time. In fact, the journey to Mars alone will take a full nine months with our current technical resources. However, this patience is rewarded the moment the space shuttle touches down on the planet's surface, which is covered in iron oxide dust. As is well known, the legendary celestial body holds some of the most amazing landscape formations in the known universe. Olympus Mons is by far one of the most impressive formations on the surface of Mars. It is a huge shield volcano that towers more than 12 miles above its surroundings. Olympus Mons, with its monstrous dimensions, is even the highest known elevation in the entire solar system. Those who are already amazed by our earthly Mount Everest will literally lose their minds when they take a look at the giant volcano. The structure is about two and a half times as large as the highest mountain on Earth. Researchers calculate that the gigantic volcano erupted a short time ago, geologically speaking. This is suggested by the residue of discovered lava flows, which have an estimated age of two million years. The huge ring-shaped trench surrounding Olympus Mons was probably formed by the extreme gravity of the volcano pressing on the Martian crust. Due to the terrestrial gravity conditions, such a structure could not exist at all on our blue home planet. It's only the low gravitational pull on Mars that prevents Olympus Mons from being crushed by its own weight and collapsing. Valles Marineris Almost 2,500 miles long and four miles deep, the Valles Marineris has amazing dimensions. The Rift Valley system, which runs along the Martian equator in the volcanic Tharsis region, is surpassed in size only by two other known Rift Valley systems in our galactic neighborhood. These include Baltus Valles on Venus and the Rift Valley systems on our own home planet. At its core, Valles Marineris is composed of many interconnected Rift Valley systems. Each of these structures is significantly larger than the world-famous Grand Canyon. For a long time, Scientific minds argued about how the breathtaking rifts on the surface of Mars could have been formed. Before the first modern telescopes and space missions took a closer look at the Red Planet, more than a few people suspected that the rift system had been created by Martians for irrigation. This was followed by the theory that Valles Marineris resulted from strong water erosion. Another theory saw the origin of the gigantic depressions and the influences of sinking magma. Currently, the hypothesis that the rift system was formed by cracks in the Martian crust is increasingly represented in the ranks of researchers. Through erosion and collapses, Valles Marineris may have eventually expanded over time. Polar Ice Caps on Mars If the reddish, shimmering landscape of the planet should become too monotonous for future Martian tourists, they could take a trip to the fascinating polar caps of the celestial body. In fact, the Red Planet has impressive, permanently frozen ice caps at its two extremes, which are clearly different from the rest of the planet. However, a visit to the poles would also be accompanied by extreme weather conditions. In the winter months, for example, it's so cold there that temperatures drop low enough for carbon dioxide from the atmosphere 
to condense on the surface to form dry ice. When the corresponding polar region is exposed to sunlight again during the summer, the CO2 sublimates, which means that it loses its solid form and again assumes a gaseous aggregate state. This natural process, in turn, produces violent storms that can reach wind speeds of about 250 miles per hour. The onset of solar radiation also causes numerous geyser-like eruptions at the southern polar cap. As soon as the top layer of soil warms up, the underlying CO2 sublimates, causing an overpressure to build up. This eventually causes the dry ice layer to break up, giving way to fountains of carbon dioxide and dust. Tharsis Region As mentioned earlier, the Valles Marineris Rift Valley system is located in the Tharsis region. However, the vast area, which covers nearly 3 million square miles, holds several other natural attractions. The plain, which clearly rises above the surrounding landscape, is home to several massive shield volcanoes. These include Olympus Mons and Ascreus Mons. With a summit height of 11 miles, the volcano is also the second highest known elevation in the solar system. Together with Pavanus Mons and Arzia Mons, Ascreus Mons forms the so-called Tharsis Montes. While Arzia Mons towers almost 11 miles above the ground, Pavanus Mons has a height of over 7 miles. But the mountain ridge, Eumenides Dorsum, is yet another one to inspire in the Tharsis region with its natural form. The area in question is crisscrossed by miles of linear structures interrupted by so-called yardangs. These are special, tabular erosion forms, which are also called sand walls or wind humps. The yardangs on Mars were formed by wind erosion. In such a process, winds carry away weathered rocks and unconsolidated sediments, permanently altering the natural landscape. In total, Eumenides Dorsum occupies an area of about 7,500 square miles. Medusae Fossae Formation The Medusae Fossae Formation dissects the surface of the red planet over a length of more than 3,000 miles. Researchers assume that the geological formation has a volcanic origin. The corresponding area is composed of an accumulation of many soft deposits. Although the widely held theory of origin states that Medusae Fossae was formed by the influence of volcanoes, it's still unclear what events ultimately led to the formation of the landscape area. In 2020, for example, a group of scientists put forward the theory that the area could have been formed from pumice rafts from Olympus Mons, but the ejected ash of the volcanoes Arcea Mons and Apollinaris Mons could have played a leading role in the formation of the area as well. A study conducted by NASA's Mars Odyssey spacecraft suggests that there may be some water in the western part of the Medusae Fossae Formation. Hellas Planitia The South Pole Aiken Basin on Earth's moon is the largest known impact crater in the entire planetary system. The gigantic collision site has an imposing diameter of nearly 1,500 miles. Right behind it is Hellas Planitia on Mars, which itself has a diameter of over 1,400 miles. At the same time, the crater extends up to six miles deep into the ground. This gives Hellas Planitia the title of the deepest region on Mars. Around the impact site, there is again a mile-high ring composed of ejected material. The so-called ghost dunes in Hellas Planitia show us once again the changes that the natural face of the red planet has undergone in the past. While the surface of Mars today is reshaped mainly by the influence of winds, the amazing dune formations bear witness to the forces that once acted on the celestial body. Experts believe that the Hellas Basin once contained dunes many meters high. Over the years, however, the dunes were submerged by water or lava, eroding their tops and leaving only their natural bases. The dunes on Mars become even more fascinating when we consider a stunning theory. Because the formations within the crater are in an area protected from radiation and wind, microbes that would not survive in other regions of the planet could possibly exist there. Gale Since the summer of 2012, NASA's Curiosity rover has been busy exploring the Gale crater. What is certain is that the impact site, named after the Australian astronomer Walter Frederick Gale, is about 90 miles in diameter and was formed an estimated 3.5 to 3.8 billion years ago. This vast plain served Curiosity as a landing site. In the course of its investigation so far, 
the technical equipment has already supplied data suggesting that on Mars, natural conditions once prevailed that made the emergence of life possible in principle. Now it's your turn. Which destination on Mars would you like to see with your own eyes? Was there a natural attraction on the red planet that particularly fascinated you? And what do you think about the plans to make our galactic neighbor accessible to interested space tourists? Drop us your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback in the comments. Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you next time.